Hi, Mr. DJ. Hello, girls and boys. Here we go. Here we go. Daddy. There's a lot that I enjoy about reading. I suppose you do too. And I don't think about it often about what it is exactly I like. I like discovering new authors. I like the, the tension. I like the style. I like it when I pick up a novel and the style is, is very unique. I like a good story. I like that it can show me the way people live in different circumstances and situations because I will only ever know my own life. But there is something very special about a book that is full of humor, spectacularly original. I believe that is that is quite rare. I was I was trying to think of all of the the funny books that I've read. I have to say that Catch Twenty Two I would put up there, and followed by The Confederacy of Dunces. The book I want to talk about today is called The Ginger Man, and it was written by J. P. Don Levy and published in 1955. One of the funniest books I've ever read. It is about most singular characters in all of modern literature. His name is Sebastian Balfay Dangerfield, and he is absolutely uninhibited by any form of modern moral constraints. Sebastian Dangerfield wants to have a good time and like he is determined to have a good time in spite of his terrible poverty, in spite of the fact that he should be studying law at Trinity College in Dublin, in spite of the fact that he is married and has a child to support, Sebastian is determined to enjoy himself and that mainly takes the form of, of drinking and womanizing. He's completely immoral. We should not be rooting for this character. We should not be cheering him on when he succeeds, and we should not be hoping that he will rally when he fails. He has no compunction about doing what most people would, what we hope people don't do, but they probably do very often. Well, what can I say? It is fiction, and it makes for a really, really great and funny read. If you have ever been a bit irresponsible in your own life and you've carried on a bit in your 20s, it's it's fun to read because it can remind you of those times when you your actions were a bit questionable. You know, whether you got caught or you didn't get caught, whether you, you managed to escape and nobody found out about what you did, or you got caught right in the middle red-handed. The plot, it's, it's mayhem. He's just hell-bent for a good time in Dublin. Eventually, too many people, he owes money to too many people, so he has to move his situation over to London. That's all I'll tell you about the plot. Drinking, women, and there is, like, in the middle of this anarchy, there is this character named Sebastian Dangerfield. I suppose that's what makes this book really fun to read, is that he is just, he's the worst. Like, if you had a friend like this, you would know that you've got to keep your eye on him, even when he's sober, because there's just no telling what's going to happen when he's around. You know, and these people are fun to go out with, but also very dangerous. They're going to cause chaos. You know, there's going to be a fight. There's going to be some disagreements. He's going to be flirting with the, somebody's girlfriend who ends up being a hockey player. Like, these people just cause, like, madness all around them. And the I just want to tell you a little bit about the publication of The Ginger Man. So I said it was published in 1955. In this book, there's quite a lot of dirty business. Not really, but... At the time, 1955, it was a sensitive age, I suppose. It was rejected because of these immoral, erotic material. So a friend of his, I think the Irish poet uh, Brendan Behan, suggested that he submit it to Olympia Press in Paris. And he suggested this because this Olympia Press had published Samuel Beckett. Okay, he sent it off to this Olympia Press and they 
published it. Now, I guess he didn't look into the matter very carefully because Olympia Press, even though they did publish Samuel Beckett, they were more well known for publishing erotica, uh, dirty books, and they published The Ginger Man as a part of their erotic catalog. It was put in that category, which infuriated J.P. Dunleavy. He, he swore an oath that he would avenge his book, The Ginger Man, that, that he would do something one day to get revenge for this slight as he perceived it. In the end, somehow, he ended up, as this company was going into decline, that he ended up uh, buying the company because the Ginger Man sold millions of copies. Like, the numbers are somewhere between like 45 million and 55 million caught worldwide. So he was, I suppose, quite wealthy. And he ended up buying Olympia Press and shutting it down, which he considered his great revenge. It's all quite amazing. I guess that's why we like to tell stories about writers, is because they do sometimes seem to have these incredible lives. So I just want to tell you something about the author, J.P. Dunleavy. I provided a link below to his obituary. James Patrick Dunleavy was born in Brooklyn in, in 1926. And in 1946, when he was 20 years old, he got married to his first wife, Valerie Heron. Stayed married to her for 13 years, and they had two children together. They divorced in 1969. In 1970, the following year, he got remarried to Mary Wilson Price, and they were married for 19 years, and they also had two children. However, when he divorced Mary Wilson Price, or she divorced him, I'm not really sure, there was a divorce, there was a question about the legitimacy of these two children that he had with Mary Wilson. And in fact, neither of those two children were Dunleavy's. That his second wife had these two children with two different men. All right, are you with me? Not with another man. One with one man and one with another man. And those men were brothers. And of one of the richest families in Ireland, you might recognize their names, that these two brothers, their surname is Guinness. Give it a try. It's a farce. A madman hell-bent on having the most fun he can have. His philosophy is hedonism, plain and simple. Give me the fun at all costs. I'm not really ready to pay the price and the consequences. You'll have to catch me. And and that, I believe, is, is what makes the book so wild. Or will they catch him? Will he be held accountable for his egregious actions? like one of the most shamelessly debauched characters in all of modern literature. And somehow he's made the hero and I was rooting for him. Don't let him get caught. Let him have that fun. Maybe that's it, you know, I mean, if he goes to prison and he reforms and he, you know, comes out and he's, you know, becomes a real staunch Christian and abstains from the bottle, you know, it wouldn't be so much fun to read. Thank you very much for listening. If you like the video, please like it down there. You know, get to the point where um, <laughs> maybe one day in five or six years, I'll be able to actually say that I, I paid for the equipment I bought to make these videos. <laughs> won't, won't that be a happy day? Read The Ginger Man. It, it will really make you smile. And if you hate it, well, you hate it. It's okay, it's not your thing. I love it though, because uh, just sometimes I feel that I've read all the fun books and now I've only got the serious, the dour books left. And of course that's not true. I just haven't discovered those fun books yet or haven't appeared to me. I haven't I haven't realized that they are fun books, okay? All right, thank you very much for listening. Have a great day.